I'm still doing setup. Okay. Uh, we're, we're almost there. Okay. We, we're almost I'm up and down. I'm so anxious. Yeah. Looks like we are live. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, we Friday haven't, at noon. Haven't, Second Friday in a row. Haven't fully messed up yet. Now I'm just trying to make sure that things are as they should be. So, talk, I talk, wonder if talk people, amongst yourselves. Okay. Does anybody remember that we're here Friday at noon? Do you think they remember Keith? You I don't know. I watched Friday. you last week. Yeah, I was yeah. so excited I wouldn't be part of it this week. Yeah, but you didn't leave any comments or ask any questions, Keith. What you was know, that I about? got pulled in different directions at work. I was supposed so, to be—I was supposed to be working, but I was watching you guys instead. So, so, so we were a sideline. That's what you he's were telling us. We weren't I'm important sorry. enough to like watch. We just blew by. I wanted to jump in. It was a good conversation. Um, you guys were talking about solar and all that good stuff last week, so that was kind of fun. It was interesting. Oh, Great. so did we uh, did we misspeak anywhere that you can recall? Did Not we get out of remember, line? Other than I think Lindsay, I think I text her. She said her uh, Soul Dawn had a twelve volt television, which it does not. That was the only oh, thing I right. caught. Did that she hit right. you back with why doesn't it? Uh, you know, she wasn't. No, she didn't even. She didn't even respond to that text. So. <laughs> I don't know. You know I was surprised because usually she'd have had something to say. She back doesn't take well, that direction. <laughs> hers might have a twelve volt television. That's she true. May have remedied she that. may have upgraded. You got to take care of those mm -hmm. kids. That's right. That's an important piece for her. Yes, it is. So I was setting up just a little bit more while we got started. Uh, I don't know if it was mentioned. Welcome back to RV Small Talk Live, or as I dubbed it last week, Friday Noon Live with the RV Small Talk crew. Obviously, Lindsay has changed a little bit. In fact, we've started calling her Keith, and she's uh, <laughs> got a family here in Napanee, Indiana. We are visiting, as you might be able to tell from the backdrop, we are in Napanee, Indiana, checking out Intech RV and chatting with our friends here. And this is Keith. Um, he's he's appeared in a few things with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Be guys keep bringing me back. That's yeah. been all right. So. Yeah, so so welcome back. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, and Lindsay, we miss you, by the way. Yeah. It's not the same without you. I'm not as quite as lively or entertaining as Lindsay, so. So, no. I mean, other than that being a fact and true, <laughs> if you by chance have questions for the podcast team or for Keith as an in-tech uh, rep here, um, or just questions in manufacturing in general, that's kind of where we're going to be focusing for this short uh, live this week. So yeah. hit us up in the comments. I can't hear you when you talk to the screen. So hit us up in the comments wherever you're watching <laughs> if you have a question. I thought only I did that. Uh, nah, nah, it's true. Does everybody <laughs> talk to their screen? I do it all day long. Uh, Clint reminds me it can't hear me. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's not listening. <laughs> but I actually pulled some questions that we heard this week. So we'll have those as well. Um, because what a cool opportunity to have Keith with us to get a manufacturer's perspective on some things. So we will use those questions to try to talk about, you know, how it feels on the other side. Because for us, it is the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not manufacturers. So anyway, hope it's interesting. Um, can we start just by you telling everybody what manufacturing is like right now? Here's what I know from my side is that there's not enough product out there to buy. Repairs are taking a really long time. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of new product. Everything is so different. Um, I'm not sure people out there camping really see the breadth of it. So it's what's a, your life like right now? It's a unique set of challenges right now. I mean, everybody, whether it's a dealership level, I know you guys see it too, you know, just with product not coming in or um, slow to receive stuff so it's it definitely has its challenges um, it's neat because there's so many new people getting into camping so one thing we've really seen is just a lot of influx of you know new customers new people jumping into the camping realm so that's that's been kind of exciting to see mm -hmm. but. so what I know that you have mentioned to me that you have a whole different set of problems when you walk in the door every day yes than you used to yes so what does your day look like and what what blows into your office as the next big problem? Because this isn't business as usual. No, it's, anywhere in the world right it's, now. It's part shortages are the big thing right now. So mm -hmm. you know, people are hearing that. You go to your you know local car dealership and the car lots are empty. Um, everybody's fighting that shortage thing, and it's it's kind of a weird problem because I mean we were we were all producing at these levels 
even back in you know January, but all of a sudden you know half the staff gets sick and now they can't get you parts and it backs up. So it's it's very odd and you really can never quite guess what it's going to be. It just you know you'll think you'll have it mastered. It's like oh okay we're short dinettes this week. Now all of a sudden we got our dinettes and our cushions come in and then it's it's um, you know some random electrical part. So. It's hard to foresee. It's hard to guess. I mean, one thing you mentioned was even the break, the switches in the breaker box. Yeah, of, of all things. I know. It's yeah, all, you don't and, have breakers, and the smallest thing just completely shuts you down all of a sudden. You know, so it's. But Home Depot has breakers. Well, they do, but then it's you know, do they have the volume and the quantity that we need? Um, oh, so you they know, don't you're, have you're like two hundred breakers. They don't have two hundred breakers exactly, and then you have here locally you have in Elkhart County a lot of manufacturers so if there is a way to switch a breaker <laughs> everybody's chasing for that so same everybody's part everybody's going right? to Home Depot yes is and it a fight to get to Home Depot first a little bit but and then there's changing you know like <laughs> a square D breaker that you use at a house is different from the breaker that's in your RV so mm -hmm. you can change some of the components to work with stuff that's more readily available and that's what we have to try and do is, you know, be proactive as possible. Mm -hmm. So try and look forward and see what is that next thing that we're going to come up short on and then try and, you know, make those purchases ahead of time. But it it's surprising how hard it is to guess that because a lot of times you don't know you're going to be missing that part until the day that 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 vendor, that supplier doesn't arrive with it. And then mm -hmm. it's, oh, oh yeah, like by the way, it's going to be another four weeks. The day it's supposed to be here, yes. they say, sorry. Sorry, our lead time got, you know, extended. And it's not because, you know, you don't fault people too much because everybody's trying their best right now. They're seeing it on the stuff th that they're buying to make their parts for us. You know, so it's this kind of trickle down effect that hits us and it's uh, it's it's very, very challenging. So. so there's no real way to put your finger on the pulse. And, and I mean, it really is whatever I face today. That's the situation. It is. Yep. And Dang. you kind of get used to it. You know, it's it's we used to never have a shortage. Like when we, we, we try to make sure that we're very on top of like when a unit comes offline, it's gonna be done. You know, that dealer can count on it, that customer can count on it. Now we've had stuff that sat here for a month at times, depending on the part. And yeah. it might be something little and simple, but at the same time, we really don't wanna ship stuff that's not complete, because we wanna make sure the dealer gets a, you know, a completed unit, and we wanna make sure that customer has a good experience and isn't fighting to find something that was you know, being shipped at a later date for yeah. their unit, so. Is it, Fair to ask how many things are sitting just waiting on a component or two right now? You know, we're probably, right now, we're probably about our highest point we've been. So we're not a, you know, we don't make mass quantities like a lot of people, but we are uh, probably around 75 units right now on the yard that can't ship. Now, some of them are ready, but maybe they're shipping with a, another unit that has a part that's missing. Okay. So, you know, you may have a load of four units. Three of them are ready to go. One of them's missing a part and it holds up the whole thing. So if you bought a trailer and you're waiting on it, your trailer may be finished, but the one next to it that has to ship together isn't? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, how many do you build in a month? So we break it down in lines. So we have our flyer product that runs down one line. That will build close to about 80 units a month. Yeah, a month. Okay. Yep. Um, and then you have your sole line that runs down another one. That's going to build roughly about 60 units a month. And then you have your Lunas where you build about 20 a month. So, 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 so roughly a hundred two, two to three there. weeks worth of build is still sitting here. Still sitting here. Yep. And can't ship. Yep. Um, how is the shipping part of it? Ship I mean, can you call a freight company and say, I got another 40 that are ready. Take them away. It's up and down. So you try and plan ahead. Typically you can plan ahead because you know, product when it's come on offline, it's going to be done. Um, right now you don't want to do that because you don't know when the parts coming in. So you can't plan land too far ahead. And then it depends on the transporter. Sometimes you'll call them and then that day they're available to come pick it up. Other times you call and it's two weeks before a load can get out of here. So you could have additional delays on top of just getting the unit completed. So okay. working with trans transporters in general has been uh, the Wild West lately too, mm -hmm. right? So, so what is normal operating with transporters and what is today operating with transporters? I mean, the conversations are different. They are, I mean, like normal, you want to be a little more organized for their planned out so you know you can say hey this these units will be ready to roll let's pick them up on such and such date mm -hmm. now that's not necessarily the case because they you know like i said you can't plan ahead and then they're struggling too because every unit that rolls offline every camper there's a customer pretty much on the other end waiting for that right, right. so there's a lot of excitement built around that so you'll see the um 
you know, the transport is moving things around unexpectedly on you because maybe somebody was screaming a little bit louder. And now this, your like load got pushed back. Yes, another dealership is screaming a little bit louder and your load get, gets pushed another back. Another manufacturer and says, Another manufacturer, yeah. yep. Okay, so, so uh, there have been rumors that uh, certain companies are paying extra to the transporters to take their product mm -hmm. and that leaves other manufacturers kind of in the dust. Is that true and have you experienced that? It has been true. The industry as a whole kind of just had to go up because there was you know, particular, particular manufacturers and even like dealership groups that were paying extra to get their product out to them. Um, so I guess the unfortunate part is that drove the price point up across the board. So now right. pretty much what we saw is just transport prices raised um, that will pretty much not come back down. Yeah, so Ouch. Yeah. just cost the dealership more customers. I don't know. If it's actually arriving at the dealership unsold, then maybe it's going to drive up the price. Yeah. I don't know. I I uh, I think, you know, when people say, "Yeah, you don't have a breaker, you don't have that, not that big a deal." Can you give me a a quick list of in the past 2 months what are things you've had to go, wait, stop the presses, we don't have a part. <laughs> Can you even give me an idea of what those are? It has varied so much. So it is could it like be, it air could conditioners? Be air conditioners, refrigerators, uh, ventilation fans. Um, it could be something as simple as like one that we run into is the, uh, the, the trim ring that goes around the ventilation fan. So we have oh, the so vent you fans, get the fan, but you have no the trim, trim ring. Rings. So uh, windows have been How a big weird. one. No, it's been a big struggle lately uh, as far as just getting them in here in time. Foam has been a big one, so things like your dinettes and cushions and stuff have been mm -hmm. held up. Um, yeah, there's probably you had 20 other that I'm forgetting. Shortages? Some, pardon me? Gas fittings? Oh, yeah, gas lines. And so breakers. some fittings and pieces. Breakers were a big one for a while. So, so you just kind of come to work to figure out what the next thing is. Yeah, you do. You know, and, and here our goal is. If, if we have to substitute something, we want it to be as good or better, right? Because you've, you've committed mm -hmm. to the product. Um, we're committed to that customer that they're going to get something that's, that's what they've expected. Mm -hmm. So there are times where you do have to substitute. You know, you have to take this Dometic refrigerator and use a Norcold refrigerator instead. So there's certain things that you will see slightly different this year that you would normally never see change on a trailer, you know, midway right. through a year. Right. right. Yeah, we have seen manufacturers just substitute and they just don't say right. anything. They yeah. just... Or, oh, by the way. Oh, yeah, you've got this new part <laughs> oh, on your the trailer. Way. So. <laughs> this, this, this one trailer out of five may have a different refrigerator. This yes. other trailer out of the same five may have a, a strange stove top. Yes. Uh, and you're like, a random air conditioner <laughs> unit that's the same rating, but it's a different manufacturer. Yeah. So that could mean that, uh, that things just get interesting for that particular trailer and its ownership life yes. cycle. Yes. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is totally different Crazy. than what we would ever expect. You know, you wouldn't do these things under normal normal times or normal circumstances. Yes. But I think as a world, we've gotten used to this year just being a little bit on the right. crazy end. Now, yeah. I think that from, we've talked to various manufacturers and where they're at and they're thinking and all that. Intech is a is a light and nimble machine in many respects. You, you don't, like you said, you aren't a major manufacturer. Mm -hmm. You're not huge and all that. Um, where does Intech fall in the thought process of, well, times are strange. Is this the season to try new things, develop new products? We think it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's you date back to March when uh, all this happened and everything was shut down and we we're in quarantine. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went to the drawing board. It's like, all right, we have time. We have potentially uh, uh, production capacity, depending on what the market renders after this. Because mm -hmm. you were so thinking it might just crash and then you, don't you know, could right? develop yeah. new products. Yeah, and we love yeah. the development part. I mean, that's probably what juices us up just as <laughs> much as anything. It's more fun than anything. It is, so we uh, you know, went to the drawing board and you know, we ended up coming out with the Discover and the Flyer lineup this year. That, that was basically came from that time period. We had had it before, but then made some tweaks and So the genesis it. Of, of that was March, 2020? Yes, yep. And they're already on the ground with owners out there camping in them. Yeah, they started shipping here about a month ago. So, mm. so that one was a you know. I knew that because I have one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't know he has one. Now you're rubbing it in. <laughs> I, know, I know. So all of you waiting, yeah, he got in line first. Yeah, it's Clint's fault. He took. Yeah, the line I so. guess that's the perks of the job. You get to see it early. Yeah, right, and say no. I want that. Well, there is there is someone out there in the Intech forum that has zero zero one because that's the that's the first production. I have zero zero negative 
one or something like that. Yeah, right? you're zero, zero, zero. You are the, you are the second prototype. Yeah. There is a first prototype out there, but that's, yeah, that's. But it's probably not even close to a Discover, so. Correct. Yeah, yeah so yeah. he's got yeah. the first one that you could actually put a name on, right? That's right, that's right. All right. So it, so it has been a creative season for you guys, mm -hmm. and that's probably been, to me, my vantage point, a silver lining if you have the capacity to do that. Not but all manufacturers have that capacity. I yeah. would not expect a manufacturer to decide to build things if you're worried about the market shrinking to nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I, I, would you? I wouldn't. Well, that's the fun part. you got to stay nimble, right? you got to be ready for whatever that. Yeah, there, there's always going to be a unique new problem, challenge to fix or solve out in the market. There's always going to be something that people, you know, and who would have guessed that camping would have been such a such a great getaway for everybody and so many new people jumped into mm -hmm. it because now it was a way to get out of the house, go do something which drove up this market. But say that wasn't the case, there would have been another, you know, another opportunity. You just have to make sure you're keeping your eyes open, looking to what the customers are asking for, what they need. And we have products that are in our back pocket that people won't see now probably for a couple of years just because of, of capacity and growing and having space to do it, but now we're ready for those next steps. So how long were you in that, let's think of some new things stage? I mean, was it a week, two weeks, a it, month? It was like a heavy week of, you know, basically you're in a shutdown time period. So a handful of us getting together, just kind of brainstorming, um, getting creative, talking to dealers. Wait, like wait, you. wait. So you created more than one product in a week? Or dreamed it up. We had concepts kind of, of more concept. than one one product in a week. Yes. How many? One, two, five, ten. Uh, Bigger than a bread box. Yeah. So they they evolved a little bit. That's the fun thing about prototyping is you know it evolves. You start <laughs> in a spot and then all of a sudden you're like you see three other things you can do with that, right? Three uh -huh. other products you can are, make. And are you napkin sketchers or do you pull out like break out the the are you whiteboarders? I'm thinking Play-Doh. I can see yeah. like all the different Play-Doh. Play-Doh's a good idea. We haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, a little yet. more napkins, napkin sketching there for all that stuff. But yeah, so it's it's fun. It just you know it comes up with some new stuff. And like I said, we got products now that will be brand new lines, even that people haven't seen. That you know it will be a while before they see them, but there will be something coming from Intech as space becomes available to us. So yeah, okay. we we met one of your engineers today early on when we mm -hmm. showed up today. Um, and is is he and is his team, are they the kind of people who go home after working here all day and they got some project in the garage and they're, you know, they're, they're welding together their oh, own yeah. rigs. Yeah. So, so you met Tom, who's our lead engineer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he has a old Firebird that he's completely restoring in his garage oh. right now. Torn down to nothing, repainted the frame, brand new everything. So. Right up your alley. Oh, like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he comes from your history as in tech because even before the RV side of things was the motorsport side mm -hmm. of things. And yep. is that going well, the motorsport side? Is oh, it yeah. seeing the Mo same boom? Motorsports. They haven't seen the same boom. You know, you don't have the level of people trying to jump into motorsports right now, like what you do have people jumping into camping. Okay. But yes, that that division for us has been at capacity, booked out for you know months and months at a time, waiting for trailers, probably for the past four years, three four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And so even we, before that was your fiber optic lane trailers. Yes, correct. So we started with fiber optics. So if you want history of Intech here, back in 2010, we started with fiber optic splicing trailers. And then probably within a year, see I wasn't here during these days, but mm -hmm. probably within a year of that time, they jumped over and started making motorsport trailers. And that was what Intech was really up until 2017 uh, when the flyers started to come out. So a majority of our history yeah. has been in the high end, all aluminum motorsport trailer range. Wow. That is not a very long time. No, it's not. Mm. Okay. so. You, you were down a week thinking mm -hmm. of all these cool things. Now you've got a whole bunch of ideas in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. And then you had to jump right back into building because there was so many people who all of a sudden wanted trailers. Wanted trailers, yeah. And that's, and that's where you just saw, like from our side, you saw May, late April, May. I mean, just go crazy. People just all over coming out of the woodwork ready to go camp. And, and wanting to buy campers and the industry as a whole just really boomed quickly. Mm -hmm. And so you had, you know, going back to a supply issue we were talking about, you had all these people who were laying off or furloughing individuals and then all of a sudden, you know, they're going, anticipating being down 50% for the year, trying to go to 150%, you know, for this year. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that, that early 
early spike that we saw probably caused a lot of the problems early on. Now, now they just continue. But mm -hmm. yeah. and so that then in turn brings the parts problems. That brings the parts problems. Yep. Yeah. Because more trailers are being built now. Is everybody in the industry working at capacity? I think so. I mean, we're kind of in our in tech bubble here, so we don't hear about what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. all the time. But it seems like pretty much all the manufacturers are going at full capacity. A lot of them are pushing a lot of overtime hours, you know, trying to catch back up from the time that was lost earlier in the year and then trying to meet, you know, the dedic the time frames they've said that they'd have product rolling out the door. So mm -hmm. it's been interesting. Now, we've talked many times about the uh, the difficulty getting certain components. You don't mm -hmm. know when they're going to arrive. Has there been a human power uh part of the troubles like you know you have to deal with spacing and manpower and maybe you have to do different shift work different ways or maybe even just finding enough bodies to handle the influx of uh the need to build yeah has that been an issue as well oh yeah big time a lot of our suppliers have talked about you know being at 40 50 percent capacity of their individuals at work um so in the early times when they did lay off or they did furlough Perhaps they went and they found work elsewhere, and then when they started ramping back up, they didn't have that entire workforce. Mm -hmm. And then you are still fighting, you know, COVID. So you got it, you know, all of a sudden you get a group of people that get sick at a facility, you know, and if it's enough, they're saying, all right, we're going to close down for a bit and make sure everybody's healthy and bring people back in. Well, then all of a sudden you've lost a week or two weeks of, of their production. So yeah. there's that aspect of it too. So how do you fix that? What do you That's do? A great question. Can you help us with that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I could. I don't know. <laughs> but what do you do? That division is down. How do you build a trailer? Well, and that's where you'll see the, you know, the other parts come into play. So, um, you know, like I said, for example, if it's a refrigerator, maybe you switch refrigerators. Or if there's an exhaust fan that's missing, maybe you have to switch brands of exhaust fans for a while just to be able to keep producing product. So that's, that's one way you do it. You also try and have a little higher inventory than what you normally would this time, you know, when you're manufacturing. Typically, you don't want to have a lot of stuff sitting around inside your facility. Space is an issue. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to maybe have extra storage areas where you're where you're stockpiling, you know, maybe a couple extra weeks worth of orders to have some backup. So, so what do you do when somebody on your manufacturing line gets test positive? What do you do? We've had we've Put them been out to pasture. fairly fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly fortunate. Bye bye. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like if, if somebody's sick, you know, obviously, even if they haven't been tested yet, you're telling them stay home. So you have way more people sick and out than you normally do. Um, mm -hmm. The way we build in our style of construction, as people learn about in tech, it's, it's hard to put more than one or two people on a unit the way we do our process. So it, it does keep very people, different. It keeps people spread out too. So we don't have as much of, we haven't had as much of the spread issues going on here, which has helped. So Can't. you just take everybody in that corner and say, all right, y'all go. You guys go, go go stay home for a little bit. Let's make sure we're healthy <laughs> and then we'll get back at it. So, so. Your, your your teams that work on different lines, say a flyer line or uh -huh. a sole line, or if let's say a, a pair, because you're saying it's typically one or two people work in a yep. section. Yeah. If a, a pair needs to quarantine at home and get tested and all that, they're out for a few days or two weeks or what have you. Mm -hmm. How well do the other people on that particular line know it? Can they fill in? Can they pull it? We try to know it through and through. Never have a job that multiple people can't do. Okay. So you know you have guys that are that are versed in a lot of different areas on the line that can jump around, but also with us having these different divisions like a motorsports, a fiber, an RV, you see you see you know influx in orders in one, maybe a drop in another area at time. So as a company, we try to be pretty nimble to where you know our employees can move around to different spots in the company. They can fill in where they're needed to, and it also gives us you know getting more into company stuff, but trying to protect to make sure our employees always have a place to come to. Even if something did slow down in one division, there's another division that maybe is picking up that they can plug into. So we, we cross train quite a bit. Yeah. We cross that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Are there any questions out there? I know that we're just yammering away, but if you have questions for us, go ahead and hit us up in the comment section. I believe I'm connected. I see something from uh, Colette Wong. So. Hi, Colette. I, I think that uh, I think that if you have a question or a remark or something like that for us or for Keith, um, I think I can see it. So leave us a comment uh, or a question. We only have a, a few, few minutes, minutes left before this live stream ends. So 
And I've got one more thing I want to cover while we have a manufacturer here because I want to get their take on this. Your take on this, mm-hmm. not there. I mean, I realize you're only one person, but you, because you see a different side, we talk to a lot of customers who have trailers now. Mm-hmm. They're thinking on changing or somebody who's always had their eye on a trailer, you know, maybe it's one of your soul horizons or something like that. And we hear them say, you know what, I think I'm going to wait till next year. Mm-hmm. Because all these people buying trailers right now, there'll be a lot of trade-ins next year with people changing units or because so many new people have jumped in, nope. they'll figure out it's not for them and they'll sell it next year once COVID has gone away. Um, I don't know. And, and so people are like hanging back waiting to buy the good deal yeah. for the used one next year. What do you think is going to happen there? Man, that one that one takes the crystal ball, you know, to really say where that market's going to go. If I had to look at it, I would say you're probably going to see prices go up on product, even as even as the market maybe softens up a little bit, because naturally one thing that happens, you know, all the way down the pipeline is, is supply gets hard to come by, um, you know, starting at the supplier level. We've already mm-hmm. seen it. Those prices start going up. So, right, you know, that, that, that keeps funneling down. So I think the used market, while you may see more stuff shoot out onto the used market, just naturally, if you have more new people jumping into it, you are going to have, um, you know, a percentage that maybe do not stay with camping. I think the used market values will be really strong because I believe it'll take a long time to come back and have inventory on dealers' lots. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we look at what, what we have right now and we have people with their names on product, you know, dating out until next summer, that are waiting for their intake that's right. being built next summer. So with that being the case, you're not going to see inventory on a dealer's lot for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even once you start getting past that and you start building inventory, that's going to take a little bit of time. So I, it's hard to say how, how that used market will be, if there will be a flood of stuff out there or if it'll start getting snatched up pretty quick, you know, from the people that do decide to jump out. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. Uh, that's something we don't have a real strong feel for or guess on at this point. Yeah, I don't think anybody does. I mean, yeah. how how do you protect anything right now? It's yeah. just so hard to see what the future will bring. Right. But I think that is the thought, that there will be a lot of used stuff next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there will be used stuff next year because people will change, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, there might be new products next year too. Yeah. I do think they're gonna get more expensive. So if trailer prices go up, the used market might be really booming. Might be nice. I just I don't know. One yeah. thing I I mean I've definitely heard that angle that people are saying. Well, I'll just wait till next year. There may be a lot of used out there. Um, but one thing that I just started kind of thinking is, we do have a lot of people who are maybe finding their love for this, but the trouble that may push them out is maybe we haven't seen a growth in the places they can go there's not as much opportunity because the state parks and national parks are uh, maybe at capacity or can't operate at capacity Mm -hmm. for some time private campgrounds are are available not available and we've heard stories of it being difficult to even open new campgrounds or rv parks uh which i mean political stuff it just it Mm -hmm. it happens but I wonder if that would be a component that, that we're also fighting. Not so much that people want to get out of this new RVing lifestyle style that they have jumped into. Maybe mm-hmm. they do really want to do this. They do really love it. But maybe it's the uh, opportunities aren't out there because they yeah. just aren't. Well. Yeah. As an industry, I think we've been looking at that for maybe the past, you know, five years, mm-hmm. noticing this this potential shortage or the beginning of a shortage of places to camp. Yeah. Just right. because of the number of people that are doing camping, jumping into the camping realm, enjoying that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, I think yeah. you're definitely right. That is part of the problem. Yeah. Where do you take this new trailer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's fun new trailer. Where do I camp? <laughs> I, I get that too, but on the, you know, on the flip side, the the boondocking and the camping yes. in open areas has become s- really very standard in the industry. So yeah. there are choices out there for people who want to make them. Yeah. And if you're not a true camper and you got into it because traveling other ways was hard, mm-hmm. it becomes more of a traveling event more than a camping event. So yes. 
I don't think all is quite as dismal as maybe we make it out to be, but certainly something that we need to improve on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and I think that the COVID concern is going to be there through this next summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's going to be gone by May and all bets are off and let's all go on a cruise together. Yep. I don't think we're going to be there. Yep. So that gives us one more season of people wanting their trailers. The industry's not going to catch up that quick. Mm -hmm. So I think we're at least a year to a year and a half away before we start seeing some of those trade-ins. Yep. And before the market loosens up a little bit, by then, the new products, price changes, I mean, a lot can change in a year and a half, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's right? Really, really hard to say what that, what so, that looks like this far I, out. I don't know. A so, lot can change. Steve Delgado, our friend from the Texas Tiny Trailer Alley, oh. in tech will be our next camper. All right. Oh, all right. Good Thanks, choice. Steve. Good, good choice. We agree. Yep. He's also a Southwest Texas Bobcat. <laughs> you just got to put that in there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You just got to put that in there. What's your in-tech of choice, Steve, if you're still out there? Mm. Yeah, which in-tech do you like? Yeah. So is it, was he looking at your Discover then at the No, at the I bet out? it's a Horizon. That's I bet, it, okay. I bet it'd be Horizon. Yeah, because uh, they love their... I can. It's okay to say it, I think. They, they're in a, in a new camp, Tab uh, 320. Okay, yeah. And they yep. have... They have Go Cats! Yes, sir. A horizon. Horizon. Yeah, he's yeah, in the horizon. I win. <laughs> um, absolutely. Yeah, Libby wants a horizon. Um, <laughs> yeah, so amazing. Um, keep your eyes peeled, Steve. I'm oh, just saying, gosh. keep your eyes peeled. All right. Pay attention well, to us for another week or two. He does. He's always with us. We, Thank you, we Steve. We may have we a thing. We appreciate it. <laughs> we, what do you mean? we are a thing right? you know, we, we may be a thing the, but the, pay attention to the, the said thing the, <laughs> the crazy continues and we thank you for hanging with us all these years we love you guys so all right um well our 30 minutes is up and look yep. we uh as they'd say on car talk we wasted another perfectly good 30 minutes yes <laughs> thanks for hanging in there for it suffering through it yeah. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, you guys. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, be sure to reach out any place that you want to. You can find us at rvsmalltalk.com mm -hmm. on the community Facebook page. Right, YouTube. Uh, YouTube, you can find us anywhere. Princess Craft RV, just ask a question. We'll talk about it maybe next week. And I'm going to put... Keith's personal cell phone number on the screen Ooh. here in a second. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Maybe next time, okay? Okay, all right. All right. Well, thank you, Keith, for joining us. Um, I hope it gave you a little bit of insight into what it's like to be a manufacturer right now. It's a, it's a challenge for sure. So thanks for chatting with us. Oh, you bet, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. All right. See you See next ya. week. Bye. Bye.